happen. So definitely going to be looking at that for again. Axe with the fourth pick on top of it as well. And that's leaving them for their final pick. Do you see the ban on the Slark right there? I mean, could they go with Terrorblade again? I mean, they obviously win the last game and it worked out well. I don't think Terrorblade would do too well against TA. Right now, TA is my biggest concern for Slice and Dice because none of their heroes are doing a particularly good job at burning through refraction. I guess technically Mystic Flare has like a lot of damage instances, but that's not reliable at all. And Battle Hunger obviously can provide a lot of utility. But this is all assuming that this TA isn't getting the initiation first, because this TA has a good laning phase, which against an invoker, TAs usually win that matchup. It's going to be difficult to shut her down if she gets a good start, if mm -hmm. the team is stacking Ancients for her, which also is something that's not as common ever since the jungle changes, but still just as viable as ever. So I think Slice and Dice needs to pick a carry that can specifically deal with the TA, and I don't think Terrorblade's the best option. They ban out Troll Warlord on the side of Slice and Dice. Interesting there. It's kind of one of those picks that it does pop up every now and then. One of those, like, he will just wreck towers with his team as well. And I guess the potential definitely could have been there for Pro Dota. So, Troll Warlord ban it. Ooh. Yeah. yeah okay. So, uh, the Troll Warlord ban, uh, I think the main reason they were banning it out is because they're concerned about the blind from Whirling Axes. And I was like, really? You don't need to ban that out just for a Spirit Breaker. They probably want some other melee hero who likes to close the gap. And Chaos Knight is a hell of a gap closer between Reality Rift and Chaos Bolt. Not often seen in professional Dota. And whenever you do see it, it's not always guaranteed to be the carry. Most recently, at least in 7.02, it has been always as like a one position. But previously, I had seen some success with roaming Chaos Knight, but it was infrequent at best. And so this is going to be a one position CK for sure. And it's a hero that can deal with C uh, TA fairly well, even though it is illusion heroes. So technically side blades can cut through all of the illusions. They're very tanky illusions and each one counts as a damage instance on TA's refraction. So if you suck her in with a few illusions, you can immediately burn off a refraction pretty easily. Oh, I go Wraith King final pick in response there. So both teams finishing what we figure is going to be their one position right here and uh that's quite the finish a chaos knight into a wraith king that's not your typical front of the mill here as far as some no. carry options go no this is this is a manly draft yeah. this, this draft has brawn in it you've got an axe you've got a spear breaker you got a ck on die uh, on the wait which team's which the radiant side i believe yeah Pro right no yeah i always here. forget it's reverse yeah man. it is kind of weird dire team you got a wraith king you got centaur these two teams are ready to be concerned about is Invoker's EMP. Um, the mana draining, I doubt CK will go a Diffusal Blade. It's not very common. Although, this game, it's Five not a bad idea. In addition to being able to burn off Wraith King's mana, um, Diffusal Blade counts in damage instance. So, motion charges book, and that's true for all of your illusions. So but, I Okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, I th uh, on that note, real quick, so I think it goes without saying, you cannot purge off refraction, right? No, it does not purge off refraction. And in terms of purging, there really isn't anything worth purging this game. But, you know, it's an item that can kite also if you just slow them. Yeah. But... Yeah. yeah, we'll see if that uh, potentially comes out. As you're saying, maybe not the most routine item, but the, uh, the game calls for it. I mean, Diffusible, it is one of those items that's not a very routine item in general again it, it, it is more of a reaction item if anything so the uh, wouldn't be out of the question here to perhaps see that coming along but as far as the early build goes isn't something like a what like an armlet probably on chaos knight even, even a helm of the dominator i guess potentially could see here yeah both of those items are good um occasionally you see an early blightstone pickup uh, it depends on how aggressive this CK wants to get early on, if he's going to be participating with his team in like these Spear Breaker gank attempts. I don't think it's going to be the same case as we saw in Game 1, at least I hope not, since SMB knows that Pro Dota were watching. I don't think they can go and send like the Skywrath and the Spear Breaker to go chill in the uh, Radiant safe lane like we saw last game for like a minute and a half before they get a kill on the carry. But... Yeah. I'm imagining this is going to be a more active Spirit Breaker than we saw in Game 1. Now, 
We're in this pause here, but I'm making note of the players and who's playing what. Alucard's actually on the Invoker. Remember last game, Karate Kid was actually playing the Invoker True. for them, and now he's on the Axe. Alucard, who was the Terror Blade that game, he's on the Invoker here. And then Jafar, he was the Vengeful the previous game, a core Vengeful, but still he's playing the Chaos Knight. So, swapping things up a little bit. Yeah, it's surprising because you typically, you'll see, like, the carry in the mid often switch roles but very rarely do you see the off lane in the yeah. mid switch roles so that is a bit unconventional what if that's like a comfort thing i mean clearly karateka knows what he's doing on evoker we saw the last game but yeah. um I, an axe doesn't seem as as crazy as like a on the evoker level like oh, you would be surprised especially against a dazzle it's a fine art to be yeah. able to weave in and out and be able to get these culling blades off on graved targets all right, all right. Well, there's a reconnect from Spirit Breaker. We're going to be good to go. So, yeah, another note on Pro Dota, by the way, as far as uh, their roster is concerned. Uh, not only uh, Insane, so Insane has been on the roster for a little bit. He, he came from another team that used to play with Mickey. Mickey kind of dropped off for a little bit, but then he, he wanted to come back into the scene, and he ended up joining with the team a little more recently, but then Come With Me, also the most recent member as well. A uh, very new player on the team, joining, I think, well, not even like two weeks ago. So this is kind of a, a somewhat newly formed full five roster team. But again, pretty excited to see them here in the semifinals of these open qualifiers. What is now the best of three against a team like Slice and Dice. And uh, so this is uh, kicking things off here. Game number one. Looking forward to it. The early vision going down is especially from the side of Pro Dota. Not so much from... Slice and dice, at least just yet. But yeah, Pro Toto making a very quick point to get that aggressive vision out here. The other game. Yeah, this is another thing that we weren't really seeing in the beginning of Open's team. Like, this is, you will always see this in competitive games. And the higher in MMR you go, you'll see it in pub games as well, where teams are doing this whole smoke in the fountain, immediately TP out of the lanes. And so, this is just showing that this, we're, we're playing for keeps now. Unfortunately, it's not uh, the, the lobby with the automated system. It's not set up for a best of three, so we can't even have the tabs up here. But again, uh, so I'll do my best to kind of keep clarifying what exactly this is. So again, we are in game number one of a best of three here, guys. The score of zero to zero. But the Wraith King, though, in the hands of Garter, the carry player for Prototo, looking to protect the Bounty Rune up top here. Right, definitely going to be some contestant coming out three seconds before it spawns the lockdown on to Wraith King. Who picks it up? It was actually in, uh, come with me on Ruby picks it up. But now they've got to worry about saving the Wraith King. The Sun Strike it is going to miss. Carter, can he actually run out of here? Meanwhile, Spear Break also getting low. Another stun coming out. No, down goes Wraith King first, though. Spear Breaker survives a little bit longer. He finally goes down, but so far, one for one exchange. But you know what? They got the first blood. As long as they don't lose any more, should still be very worth it. And I think think that's going to be the case unless Garter can close the gap. Okay, well, going to go for Jafar now. Here on the Chaos Knight. Big heal right there from Insania, doing plenty of damage. And actually, Chaos Knight in trouble, so guess what? We got oh, plenty nice of action. moves. Big things off here. He's actually going to escape here, right? Wow. There's a heal staff. All right, so, so much. Yeah, this is a boring game so far. <laughs> I'm actually very surprised that the Rubik opted to take Fade Bolt at level 1. Whenever you have three heroes clumped up like that, you are bound to get a Telekinesis land, and that may have bought the Wraith King enough time to survive and not give up first blood, but he went for Fade Bolt, and he got the Bounty Rune, so not the biggest disaster, but yeah. this is a very, very mean tri lane to go up against if you're the Radiant team right now. Skyrath, Spear Breaker, Chaos Knight. Again, they ran the trailer last game with a somewhat really different lineup uh, in there. Doing the same thing this time around, but yeah, you're right. They got plenty of lockdown. They got a lot of spam harassment with the Arcane Bolt of Skyrath, as you were stressing before the game even started right here. And he's level 2 already on top of that. So uh, he's saving that second point, I guess. So it's, it's the question of Concussive Shot or the Ancient Tail. Okay, there we go. He does get the Concussive Shot here. Not uh, to top it off for now, but... Yeah, if you're pro Dota, I mean, how do you respond? Do you, do you try to contest this as they're doing here? That's actually hold that thought because we are going to see the initiation on Insania coming out. He has Shallow Grave, by the way. So he's playing more of a defensive style right here. That could come into play as they are committing pretty deep. Skyrath Mage taking the return. There comes the nuke from Rubik. One Marauder attack from Garter. He can't get close enough, though. Beautiful stun onto him to prevent him from chasing. But now Spirit Breaker. Oh, no. His charge is stopped. Nice cancel. And come with me. Picks up the battery rune. And they secure the kill on top. Yeah, beautiful cancel on the charge. So... Oh, I guess that kind of answers my question. They they can hold it. Skyrath did stop die as well. I didn't even notice that. 
Oh, to the neutrals, okay. Yeah, he denied himself. That, they should have waited for level 2, because Spearbreaker, as we saw, did not have Greater Bash. That's the reason why his charge got cancelled. Like, normally, whenever you're charging in melee range of three heroes, they will all get bashed as you begin to rear your feet. But he doesn't have any points in Greater Bash, so the charge is literally just a gap closer, and that's it right now. Got you. He's going to use yeah, it right see, here, but... Doesn't touch any of the creeps on the way, and no. they're still going aggressive. I, I mean, they have... There's no way that this Wraithing is going to feel safe farming. So they should just let the CK get free farm. Don't worry too much if you get kills or not, because this Dazzle and the Rubik will have to stay up here no matter what. But they're going again. Yeah, they're going to keep up the aggression. Or Spearbreaker going in. That's what that bash does. He's talking about. Come with me. Gets pulled in with the reality rift right there. But out comes the Shallow Grave. And out the cost for Jafar on that Chaos Knight. He wants to chase down the uh, contestant shot coming out. Not going to be enough. The take out come, come with me in the background and our chaos knight does survive himself so the back and forth is real you do see dazzle not enough mana for anything other further of assistance other than the auto attack oh the so, concussive the sun strike strike it's gonna let us spread the damage you're right split between the two of that saves rubik see that insane heads up too you know standing next to him perhaps expecting that and they were right so but this action at the top lane is it a slice of dice does not want to give it up yeah, this is Slice and Dice's bread and butter. Let's go again. Great King. Still locked up. Gets the what bash. Bash. 17% coming through. And down goes Wraith King. So it's just a matter of time before that happens, it feels like. You know what it is? The the stick count is in favor of the Radiant team right now. Yeah. You know, they've got three sticks on all these Tri-Lane heroes. Dazzle didn't have a stick. Went for Boots first. Oh. Boots? Come on, son. What are Boots uh. going to do for you? <laughs> He does have history of being a much more aggressive support player again. He likes the idea of the movement right here, I guess. Yeah, that must that must really hurt him that he couldn't get any points in Poison Touch, to be honest. Yeah. No, I agree there. Um, yeah, it, it, it does seem like the boots first, though. I, I definitely agree with that. It seems like maybe not having the most efficient use. I mean, positioning, sure, it can help. But, yeah, those sticks, you are right. Having it across the board, no doubt benefiting Slice and Dice comes to the tri lane but look at the wraparound from rubik they're, they're they're tired of dealing with the top lane for the time being he's gonna wrap around with a smoke right here maybe try to set up an invoker mid but unless he's pushed out it's not gonna happen yeah but ta should uh, do a pretty good job she's about to hit level six and one more creep so they'll probably wait for that so that she can get a trap come with me puts up a ward and now they're gonna go there we go the trap comes out now the card lifted in the air throwing right back into the uh, Templar Assassin, of course, Camarado attacks. Yes, it is going to be enough. Rubik, credit for the kill. A good execution right there, exactly. Being patient up, however, at the top lane, Wraith King, Shallow Grave gets it off at the last second. Uh, Stampede actually activated wow. as well. That's why they're running so fast. He's level six right now. And actually, Spearbreaker is going to end up falling. God, it took a while. Finally goes down, though. Can he maybe save uh, Rubik? No, he cannot. Dazzle, not enough mana again for another heal. And they did get the turn kill at least. But a one for one. Yeah, big save on a race king there, though. Keep him alive. And he's going to TP back. back to base. This is. It's a, a Slice and Ice are playing this tri lane similarly to how they played the tri lane in the first game. I, I thought it was going to be a more active spear breaker. Well, this time he's going to the mid lane, so that may help out a little bit, but he's going to cancel the charge. Look at Mickey, by the way, in his farm. 32 and 17 compared mm -hmm. to a 15 and 5 invoker. I, uh, is, that, uh, is that expected? Yeah, TA pretty handedly wins this matchup most of the time. Uh, it's the other disadvantage that a card will not be able to easily get points in Wex, and so Ghost Walk was not available for that gang attempt. And yeah, you need all the damage you can get in this situation, and so. It's pretty typical for a TA to win it, and especially after they get that kill on Invoker as well as Dazzle is going really low with this dive. Sunstrike? Oh, he went right back into it. Obviously, you cannot know where it's coming from, but uh, they do kill Chaos Knight in return. So, you know what? They're just fine with that trade. As uh, the charge oh, out of the No! No. Oh, wait. He turns a creep, actually. Yeah, okay. But Garter cannot really do it. He chose not to do anything. He had a Wraith Fire Blast, but figured yeah. it was not worth it. Double damage. Now mid lane. Oh, they want to go in. You double damage. She oh. has a DD rune. Yeah, that's big. Look at the melt there on Invoker. Wow, that life just disappeared. And in the middle lane, we have Cheshire Cat right here. He's collapsing and onto Karate Kid. Spearbreaker going to charge into the back row, but Karate Kid limping away on Axe. The double edge going to finish the job. And those side blades with that Ooh. double damage. You're in the chase. It's not enough damage. Come with me, though. 
He wants to chase, and the trap actually slowed him down a little bit. He's trying to go for the TP. Yes, it will be successful. Not enough cooldown ready for the nuke right there. Finish him. So at least Spirit Breaker escapes. But they get the kill in Act and Invoker just fine for Brododa there. Yeah, this is what I'm concerned about. This TA getting a good start like this is going to be a big concern for Slice and Dice. And Centaur rotating in made a really big difference. Originally, it just started out as an Invoker kill, but Centaur came in, was able to get the stomp on Axe, was able to progress it now in the top lane, Skyrath. Almost dead for sure with that heal bomb. Yeah, it sets up the perfect Shadow Wave combo, really. And that, that's actually a decent combo in itself. You don't really maybe think about that too much, but the, the lift into a Shadow Wave heal from Dazzle, put him in the appropriate position, could definitely deal plenty of damage, so. Good coordination there. Easy kill onto the uh, Skyrath. I mean, this top lane, it has been going back and forth, but especially after that kill now with Chaos Knight and just Chaos Knight dying just before that, it does seem like Pro Dota, yeah, is starting to come online quite a bit. You mentioned the Centaur's impact, and he's roaming again. That ultimate's up in three seconds. Pick up the bounty rune right here. Uh, he might head mid if maybe sees the Invoker. Invoker's playing it safe, though. You look at Invoker just farming the jungle up a little bit. Oh, Rubik has Chaos Bolt stolen. Okay, that could come into play. Oh, I guess you used it right there, actually. Is there the Reality Rift pulls him right back in, but the Shallow Grave gonna save him for now. Buying some time, he's gonna go for the TP. Will it be successful? Yes, it will. He gets out, and guess who's here? It's Mickey, the double kill. Hasted Mickey. Hasted let's Mickey. go for a triple. Oh, let's make it a triple. One more auto attack should do it. There we oh, go. Oh, baby, a triple. That trick coming out. Classic. And doesn't even miss that much. He's going to come back right to the mid lane. Barely even misses a wave. Really smart rotation coming out from Mika. Yeah. 4,200 net worth for him now. That blink dagger coming along. And I also wanted to mention that Cheshire Cat here on Centaur. He's going straight into the blink dagger as well, you know. And he just he obviously has a tranquil boots, but I talked about this before. The idea of like a hooded defiance being good, but you like the going straight into the blink here. Yeah, this game, the only magic damage that you really need to be concerned about is coming from Skyrath, and that's not something that you need to sweat about, especially in the early phases of the game. Much more valuable to be able to blink onto these targets, especially you can synchronize it with TA's blink, so he just now completed the blink on the Centaur. TA should have her blink in around, like, a minute and a half. Yeah. And Amidas is getting close for Invoker, so of course that's his amp tool that... Uh, Alucard attempting to finish here, and they're also jungling kind of together. Chaos Knight and the Skyrath working together in the jungle. He's trying to finish that Helm of the Dominator, as we were mentioning, onto the Chaos Knight here, which will be impactful. But Wraith King, he has an Armlet in the works, and both of those power threads. Blink debut on the mid lane. There's that hoof stop, the double edge, and he steals, uh, well, steals the Force Spirit, actually, <laughs> before he gets the kill right there. And he'll spawn and he'll push out the lane, but yeah, the blink debut, that's pretty much, that's probably the prime target, keeping the lockdown on Invoker. Yeah, this is a very, very sad Invoker, and this Centaur has gotten such an amazing start right now. Didn't even need to use the Telekinesis on the Rubik. It was just that double edge and the hoof stomp that did more than enough damage to finish off this Invoker. TA wasn't even there, she was off farming, and she does have her blink dagger completed, it's coming in on the Courier, and yeah. This means that the map is going to get that much more dangerous for the Radiant team right now. Even though they have pretty tanky heroes, the CK, this Axe, the Spearbreaker, they're not typically squishy Tara supports that'll get blown up by, you know, the opening Blink Daggers. But when you've got a TA with three points in Meld, she's level 11 right yeah. now. You've got a Centaur who's level 10 right now. Everyone can get it. We're, we're kind of going over slice and dice and clearly an aggressive team in the, from the previous match, but you saw, and they did that very well. But yeah, Pro Dota also showing that they can not only match that, but definitely do it even one step further, it feels like, with their aggressive play themselves and uh, really kind of clicking together as a team early on. Now, kind of focusing back on slice and dice, I mean, again, the positives, the Helm of the Dominator for Chaos Knight, I believe it is being delivered. So yeah, it's coming out right here. Uh, Hand of Midas recipe is on the courier as well for invoker so they do have some key items Radiance middle but Radiance can they really ult sexy ult attack oh, is going to be going with the berserker's call they want this kill on their team but a lot easier said than done especially when he has support nearby Centaur's going to walk it off now ta has that refraction up another one uh, actually just going to use the meld right there go for the turn call the spear breaker and now karate kid on axe berserker's call bulking up in the face almost like a taunt but 
he just falls shortly after. So, I, I mean, uh, that was a very ambitious attempt right there. One of the TA. I guess the idea was since Stampede is down, then maybe we have a small advantage, but Insania coming in on the Dazzle with this maxed out Shadow Wave just gave too much sustain, and I guess Axe didn't get the luckiest of spins, and it didn't work out. And not only do they lose that tier one, but they're gonna lose Roche as well, and I don't, I mean, they should give it to Mike, but I guess Garter's helping out with the Vampiric Aura. Oh, but they want to contest. Yeah, that seems so risky, though. Exactly because of this lead that they have, but they, they no, definitely they are going to try. They can do it. Oh, well, they're going to go for it. Garter is going to go low. He has reincarnated, of course. A Roshan. Are they alive? So they're not going to get it themselves right now, but they are going to no. prevent them. They don't have nearly enough damage to take it, especially because Jafar's illusions can't do anything to Roche. Yeah. So now Centaur's back. Uh, Centaur's like, all right, we want to go in. Stampede, he gets silenced right off the bat, but Skyrath's going to die. Reality Rift in the back. They get the pull in onto Rubik, and they get the kill. There's the cooling blade to finish off the Rage King, but guess what? He has that reincarnate. He's right back up. The buyback as well from Rubik, a very early one at that. Jafar's still standing on the front grounds right here. The Chaos Ball still on notice. Gonna use it back in his face to charge on through from the Fear Breaker, but down goes the Chaos Knight, the shallow grave on breaking just in case. Not even necessary. There's a double kill, and just as we kind of expected, it was a very again ambitious attempt right there. And they also did all that without Invoker outside of a Sunstrike. I mean, it, it just didn't seem like the correct choice. Yeah, it was a bit overzealous but they they had the right idea of contesting roche but they shouldn't have gone into the pit they should have just kept a few heroes around made sure that ta can't go back in and solo it but them committing to a team fight was unnecessary especially like you said without the invoker which the invoker can't really do too much in terms of team fight spells but alacrity on a chaos knight would have been a lot of bonus damage this invoker is you know he's level 11 he was solo mid he's not completely sacrificed but yeah it is going to be a setback for slicing dice what do we got with the net worth chart upwards of six thousand right now you got about a six thousand experience lead on top of that wraith king again the arm lead, yeah not even being finished yeah that's just something else to, to worry about where does he go after the armlet is he maybe a blink dagger himself or or what here you think uh, I don't think it's necessary, this game. He can if he wants, especially since they have such a good lead, but with Centaur, Stampede, Centaur, Blink, Hoofstomp, and TA having a Blink, I think Garter can kind of focus on either survivability or just get more damage. Alright, we'll see what, uh, see what Wraith King decides for here. I know the idea of like a Radiance Wraith King, but I think oh, that's man. more of like the jungle. Right? <laughs> oh, like a pub stomp. Yeah, it's more of a pub stomp. You'll, it's a very amusing item, and I think it's eminently viable against some team comps, like maybe even against like a TA, but yeah, not this game. All right. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to be going for Blade Mill okay. and then going to be going for a Blink Dagger. So it's a median build. He'll not immediately go straight for the Blink Dagger, but like I said, some more survivability and definitely a good way to discourage this CK from just bullying you. Yeah, I mean, you see CK, though. He's only level 8, and that has a lot to do with the trial lane, you know, sharing experience in it. So uh, sure, there was a lot of action back and forth and some of it going on top, but that's the downside. Now he's kind of under-leveled, and they're trying to make up for that by pushing this top lane but look at cheshire cat he's sitting here ready to go with the hoof stomp blink dagger are they gonna really try to defend this though i mean you figure they are with him being here obviously he's not being seen they're scouting things out in Voker in the background he's gonna be jumped first though he's gonna be quickly killed oh no now without him spirit breaker charging in now he's by himself isolated I'm gonna go for the quick tp that ain't gonna work though oh, nice charge steal they didn't have any stuns oh but that, that was, was it well you're right yeah I thought it was a hoof stomp, but yeah, you're right. That was still on cooldown. Very well, well played. played by Come With Man. Man, Centaur was just like barely out of vision. You see this Radiant Ward straddling in between the the vision of the tower, and Centaur was just in this little nook to the left of it. As now mid lane, Karate Kid getting dove. Getting yeah, uh, you, getting isolated, really. And again, you gotta really wonder. It, they're on the other side of the river by themselves like that. Like, Radiance what are they even doing in the first place? So, just uh, finding themselves in some odd spots sometimes. And Pro Dota Gaming is just completely capitalizing. 21 to 5 lead. Radiance you have the Hood of the Five on Centaur. So, of course, uh, mitigating some damage. You're right about the, the magical. Lack of magic damage maybe on the on the other side, but 
To be fair, I did got a credit to chat on this one. The double edge being magic itself, I guess that it does allow for more spammability of it as well. It does. So yeah. there is an aspect there as well for why he would get it here. Here comes the group up, though. And again, what does Slice and Dice have up their sleeve? To, to they, I feel like they shouldn't even defend this, right? Yeah. No, they don't have anything right now. They needed this invoker to get larger, and he's working on his ag. He's about 1,500 gold away from it, so that'll help, assuming he doesn't get picked off by the centaur. Come and get it! Come and get it! Oh, he is going to move away just in time. <laughs> he saw it was creeping on up, but... Going to make his way out of there. That axe, it's coming along. It's just under a, over a thousand gold before he will have it now. So obviously, that's uh, something to be have a little bit of a smile about if you're slicing dice here. Then you look at Chaos Knight, and then the frown comes back, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, he's working on this armlet. It's, uh, I, I don't really know what the trend is on CK, if you go for the armlet first or you go for the helm first. Personally, I think the armlet is better because your illusions benefit from it, especially if you take Phantasm early on, which these days pretty much everyone takes Phantasm at 6 anyway, but yeah. I think the armlet provides a little bit more utility than the helm. Well, either or, I don't know if that would have really made a big difference, to be fair. Yeah. But, yeah, perhaps uh, something to look yeah for future but the secondary tower going down right there and again he's gonna farm out and push it out a little bit more but try to get that armlet at least finished but yeah obviously a lot of damage already done by pro dota the bottom tower the reclaim on the aegis at least that's right they had that the whole time but not necessarily coming into play as far as being used but ta level 14 that means almost level 15 go bigger and Oh, what does it go here? The 12% evasion of the 6 old stats? Probably the evasion, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I would definitely go evasion against a CK, against a Spear Breaker. Evasion's a big deal. Yeah, level 14 Centaur, who actually is finishing a Yules here uh, to follow up the Hood of Defiance. Gotta say, is that really a typical Centaur item? It doesn't feel like it. It's not typical. It has its place, though, and it seems that both uh, the TA and the Centaur are concerned about purging. So TA has a Manta style, or, or she had a Manta style, now she has a BKB queued up, which I think is a better choice. But yeah, it's possible that the CK is a little bit concerned with the uh, the minus armor on Reality Rift. It's minus seven armor, which is quite a bit, especially since the Centaur is building more magic mitigation, like we said, with the hood, then he kind of gets kind of squishy pretty easily to physical attacks. So a Yule is being able to purge it off and obviously just help out with catching targets as well. If they blink, he can Yule's buy time for the TA to come in, buy time for the yeah. Wraith King to come in. So it's a, it's a very well-rounded utility item. Pushing a tier three tower at 19 minutes in. That's where we're at for Pro Dota Gaming. The lift on Invoker in the background. That, that's a quick kill onto Invoker with no buyback and an axe also going to fall. He has a buyback, but you got to question is it even worth it? They might just even give up not only the tier three tower, but these racks right here. Because with no buyback, okay, he is going to buy back, but again, unless they really defend right here, it just seems worthless. Be doing so, and I don't think they're gonna be able to without Invoker. So, yeah, PD is positioning in such a way that he can't get a good taunt on anything. Now is a pretty good opening, but Centaur's waiting in the shadows, Dazzle's waiting in the shadows. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, so a, it's, it's probably if you had a second chance right here to make that decision, you know, maybe you wouldn't be buying back, but it is what it is already. He's, he's bought back, so the money's been spent. And Invoker is going to be up in a couple of seconds, but they're going to go for a middle tier three. Now, this isn't necessary for Pro Dota, but I assume they're going to push at least the tower and then fall back is the idea. Taking advantage of that Desolator. And there we go. So Mickey will fall back, and now they have the shrines available to kill, of course, on top of that. Again, we, we are only 20 minutes into this game, and actually, Centaur's like, you know what? We're not done. The big fallback goes in on the Axe right there. Charge in the background, hits multiple heroes, but the quick kill on the Axe. And now Spear Breaker, he's going to Nether Strike, just simply trying to live. That ain't going to work. The reality rip for the Centaur of Old Targa is probably not the best one. Pick off in the background, on to Invoker. GG, well played. It's a 20 minute dominating victory for Pro Dota here tonight. Pro Dota was ready and waiting for this aggressive tri lane, and they were putting a lot of focus on it. And it looked like Pro Dota were kind of breaking even for the most part. But. The advantage is that the mid lane of Pro Dota was doing great. This TA was getting an amazing start. The off lane of Pro Dota was doing great. The Centaur got such an early blink dagger. If you put such a focus on one lane,